Hi everyone. It can be a little bit overwhelming trying to figure out which transmission line model to use for your applications. If I go up to my Elements brow uh, browser, which I have up here on the upper right, and I go to Microstrip Lines, I can see that we have well over 20 elements. And we get a similar number for strip lines. So which one to use? Well, in this short video, what I'd like to show you is the types of line models that we have and give you some suggestions which one might be the right one for your applications. All of the models have in common that we are getting uh, propagation constants for the transmission line in the cross-section of the line and then multiplying by the length to get the final transmission line model. So what we're solving for in all these models is the resistance, capacitance, inductance, and conductance per unit length. If you wish to, you then can derive the characteristic impedance and propagation constant for the line. Now the way the models differ is the method in which they get these parameters. We have closed form models and two different forms of EM models. The closed form models basically use a formula. Typically we've taken it from either the literature and possibly modified it somewhat to make it more accurate. The pros of these models is they're fast to evaluate and they can include many effects like dispersion and loss, etc. Uh, typically, these uh, mo uh, formulas are either developed from uh, simplified forms of Maxwell's equations or possibly curve fit to numerical data. Why not always use these models? Well, they have a number of limitations. They tend to be medium accuracy because they have to s support a wide range of parameters. If, for example, you're only interested in gallium arsenide, you might be able to get a much more accurate EM model. They have limited geometries. For example, they may not support certain coupled line models. And they can have difficulty with non-zero thickness lines as well as low frequency and DC problems. The EM models come in two varieties. Uh, the one that is always used except for the case of silicon chips, which we'll get to in a minute, is what is known as the EM quasi-static model. You can tell you have one of these in the model uh, element browser uh, because it says EM quasi-static. And they, these use a variation of the moment method. Now what that does is we put charges at the boundary of all the conductors. As you can see in this picture, it's the green line. And we also put fictitious charges between dielectric layers. These are just used in the math to help solve the problem. They don't exist in real life. Once we've solved for the charges, we can get the capacitance and inductance matrices, as well as the resistance of the line. Now, the frequency dependence in these models is assuming a well-developed skin effect in the uh, conductors. And so all the resistance, conductance, and internal inductance of the lines goes as the square root of frequency where we actually only solve at 10 gigahertz and then make that approximation. Is it a good one? Well, it turns out on packages, boards, and mimics, we're always in the well-defined skin depth region. For example, copper at a gigahertz has a skin depth of a couple microns, and your one ounce copper line on your board is about 50 microns thick. So we certainly don't have to worry too much about it. The one exception to this is on silicon chips, where with an aluminum line, uh, it may only be a couple microns thick. So the skin depth really is not much smaller than the line thickness. And we also have a conducting silicon substrate to worry about. So what we do in this model, and you can always tell if you have one of these because it says FEM in the, in the model definition. If you have one, uh, what we do is we actually break the whole cross section up into little triangles and solve for the electric field. It's very accurate. You can see the little triangles on the conductors, but you pay a price. It's fairly slow to run. So I really only recommend this model for silicon chips. Finally, I do want to mention that a number of our discontinuity models, like Benz, T's, and open-ended lines, we have something called X models 
these are EM based models. Uh, basically what we do is we take a fairly simple model template. Here you see an L and two C's modeling a bend. And then we fit the parameters, the L and two C's, to the EM simulations run in the background. And then we compile a table to give the final model. Now we've run these EM simulations ahead of time when we ship you the software. So the X models are very fast to run and yet they're much more accurate than a standard closed form model because we've actually fit the parameters to EM. Well, I hope this brief video has given you a little bit of a feel of how to use transmission line models. Uh, if you want more detail, you're welcome to go to our website onto our knowledge base where we have much more detailed uh, descriptions of what they're like. And finally, if you have any questions on our software, please don't hesitate to visit awr.com or give us a call. Thanks a lot and have a great day.